Yes, you heard me correctly. You can get on Bell Top in one month. $1.2 million. Hey there guys, MCB here. Today we're going to be doing some Invaded Lands Kid PvP and I am back with another Get Rich tutorial video. Now to all of my current subscribers, I haven't said this in the past and I probably won't be saying it much after this. Uh, YouTube implemented the notification bell and as you might have heard some of your other YouTubers saying, you gotta ring the bell for notifications to come in constantly. I've uploaded twice in the past week and still gotten four different people saying they haven't noticed anything. Make sure to hit that notification bell if you are seeing this video. And um, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy this, you know, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and of course hit the bell. A lot of stuff to uh, look forward to. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so let's begin with the very, very obvious, which is, of course, selling gear on the auction house. This is probably the main way that a lot of people make their money, and for good reason, because there's always a market for practically anything that you can sell. The economy has also changed a significant bit since the last season. For example, crapples used to be, or uh, not chapels, that is, I believe they used to be around 250 each uh, if I remember correctly but now they're going for roughly a thousand each and as you can see almost all the ones on AH are going for roughly that price they're going for a little bit less when you buy them in bulk but you can buy or you can sell them for about 900 each and they'll pretty much always sell on top of that you can also sell the diamond gear um, as opposed to you know PvPing in it um, and a set of diamond gear goes for like if it's pro one it goes for about 800 per um adding on the bow and the sword you can probably get a thousand so that's another you know two thousand ish now of course donator kits also exist and as you can see i'm lord kit i get mvp vip pro and lord um as well as my normal daily kits so for example if i sold every single one of these i would be able to get uh let's see and i forgot to mention this earlier but if you're adding in the cost of potions um, speed and stuff like that all together is like a thousand, but those harming pots, one and two combined, is gonna get you another like 12 grand. So, all together, that's like $33,000, alright? However, that is of course not the only non-violent option. You also have the ability to just go to any random private warp. Uh, and these are where it's most effective. You can do it in other places, but this is probably where we're gonna get the best success. All you want to do is find yourself a trap just like this one at Private Warp Smackina. Alright, you just jump down and Private Warp back up. And you can pick up gear. Like, for example, there you go, Punch Bow. Alright, often there's a lot better stuff. I mean, this is some pretty crappy low durability stuff, but I mean, that's literally Prot 2 and Prot 3 right there. Alright, if that's something that you need. Going down here and getting some low durability sets is not exactly the worst thing that you could do. In fact, I myself, as you might have saw in my last video, uh, got a sharp 4 just by going into a warp and loot swooping, alright? There was a naked, I killed him, he dropped a sharp 4, prop 3 sets, a ton of gapples, pretty great. Alternatively, you also have the option of AFKing alt at spawn. This is not something that I personally do, partially because I don't have that many accounts. I only have like 10 or so, and some of them I want to keep private, as well as I don't really feel it's worth it for me personally, because I'm not exactly in that much of a need for money or gear. It's just casual for me. But what you could definitely do is just AFK alts in different places around spawn, and there are some places better than others. How about like one on each side of this, one directly in the middle, have a few by the crates, maybe one right here, one in front, one in the back. You know, you don't have to have all that many, but overall, I think that could be pretty effective. Make sure that you have your slash pickup filter set up so that you aren't picking up any crap like this. Uh, and you might want to even get rid of stuff like arrows, bows, and gapples. Because, to be completely honest, it's unlikely that those are going to be enchanted. And those are probably what's going to fill up your inventory. But you can easily pick up, you know, rods, potions, diamond gear, notch apples. It's really pretty effective, I'd imagine. So that is practically it for the non-PVP strategies. As you know, this is a kit PVP server, so PVP is going to be the main way that you make your money. But these are still very viable options, and they can make you quite a bit if you use them right. But with all that being said, let's move on to the PVP strategies.
Now for our first PvP strategy, we're gonna go for the very, very basic spawn PvP camping strategy. Now this has been basically a thing on every single map, and honestly, you can just do it to anyone, alright? You just get a punch bow, and you bow everybody off, and you just, it's free kills, it really is. Look at this. I mean, if you have good aim. I don't have good aim. And I've only been here for like a minute or so. I've already gotten seven kills, all right? For someone who's using just a punch one bow, it's pretty great. Now, if there's somebody over here already and you need to get past them, it's really not all that hard uh, as the people that tend to be over here aren't always the greatest, uh, if I'm being fully honest with you. But yeah, you can really just strafe around their arrows Usually they'll only get like two or three shots in before you get across, and if you're decent at PvP, you should be able to knock them off or kill them, no problem. Now, while that strategy is very good, if somebody has pearls and good gear, or skill, you're kind of screwed. Which is where our next strategy comes in, which is the God Gear PvP. Now, you can do this pretty much anywhere you want to. I'd personally suggest doing it in private warps. Um, spawn PvP tends to be the place where most hackers PvP, which is where you're, you know, most likely to lose your gear. It also has a fair amount of people that are also grinding because this is where the most irons go down to PvP. But as a result, that is also where you're going to be getting the most kills, so it's really your choice. Uh, warp FPS is also a pretty decent option. I've noticed that it's very rare for fire PvPers to be there, and usually you're gonna have, you know, three to five people coming down to PvP at any given time. Often they'll come back even after you've killed them, so it's a pretty great way to grind. Now as for private warps, these can be pretty good, but it does depend on how large the private warp is, whether it has traps and safe rooms, parkour, stuff like that. Now for example, this warp, Private Warps Machina, is a great warp to grind. As you can see, there's only two people with fire swords and they are already taken up with each other, so feel free to go around and kill as many irons as you want. A lot of these diamonds here are also pretty easy to kill. As you can see, they have sharp 3, punch 2, or below. And while that is pretty good gear still, as long as you got a fire sword and, you know, a decent amount of skill and they aren't cheating, it's not necessarily going to be very hard for you to kill them. You also have the option of doing some sort of baiting tactic to get people either A, to a specific private warp that you want, or B, just to any private warp with a parkour area like this, or some other incentive for the players. Often, you've probably seen in chat, you know, come into X warp, and if you beat the parkour, I'll give you $10,000, or I'll rank upgrade you to God. All you have to do, say that in chat, go up to the top of the parkour before you do it, and just bow people off. Honestly, that's probably the best thing you can use god bows as well for. They are uh, not the greatest for bow boosting because, you know, obviously they set you on fire. But if you're shooting people from a really high place, that power 4, that punch, and that fire can all be tremendously helpful in killing them before they hit the ground. Because in a lot of warps, even at the highest point in the parkour, you can fall straight to the ground on full health, take, you know, five hearts of damage. But if you have a power four shooting at you, you're on fire, you've been punched, you know, 10 blocks back, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to survive. You also always have the option of trapping. For example, at this private warp, which is private warp, I want your cactus, there is a nice large spawn trap right in front of the spawn. All you have to do is find somebody that's gullible enough to get close to it, you can hit them in, you can rod them in, you can punch both them in, and it is a very, very, very easy task to kill them once they are inside of here, as long as they do not have pearls. If they have pearls, they can get out and they'll probably come for revenge, but realistically, that's not going to be the majority of people. I'd say that's probably less than 5%. And for the other 95%, it's going to be a great way to get yourself not only iron kills, but diamond kills, even some good gear like sharp 3s, punch 2s, rods, prop 3 sets, notch apples. Now there are other types of traps that you can trap players in, this is just the main type that you're going to see on most private warps, but using this specific private warp as an example, again, there are a few traps like this, where, you know, they're fake safe rooms, you go into them and somebody can crit you out from below. Uh, and you basically can't get out. There's two of them right here. And uh, you're going to be able to find stuff like this in a fair amount of private warps. You also might find some with pistons that pull out from under you. Overall, I'd say probably the majority of private warps have some form of trap. But uh, the spawn trap is almost always going to be the biggest one.
And finally, you have the option of using keys. Now, there are four different types of keys at pretty much any given time. You're going to have the obvious event key, which you get from winning events such as Water Drop, Red Rover, Sumo, etc. The vote chest keys, which you can get just by typing slash vote, clicking on the link, entering your username, and voting for the server. There's also the invaded keys, which you can buy off the store. And in this case, it appears that there's two different types of special chests going out right now, which are the Thanksgiving chest and the Christmas chest. It is January, neither of these should be here, but they are. Out of the event crate, the most often drops are going to be the MVP and VIP gear uh, kits the two sets of unenchanted diamond armor, the three fishing rods, the $1,000, and the 64 crapples. The vote chest is a little bit better. Surprisingly, you would expect it to be worse because it's free and doesn't take much effort. But as you can tell, there are a lot more rewards and the better ones have higher chances. Uh, as you can see, three fishing rods has been upgraded to five. You've now got different types of potions. Uh, you're more likely to get three or $10,000 in this. Um, I've gotten Kit God, Kit Lord, and Kit Pro from the vote chest fairly often, and there has even been a few times at the beginning of the season where I've won OP swords, OP bows, notch apples, more keys. It can be pretty great. But that is basically it for the tutorial. This one was a much more condensed version. I wanted to be a little bit more brief. I wanted the video to be, you know, just higher quality. And I'm doing a different type of editing style. So let me know if you guys like this. All in all, it's only about 10 strategies. But if you combine these and say spend two hours on PvP every day. And then, I don't know, half an hour doing the other non-PvP strats. You can probably make, if I were to average, about $40,000 per day. And that, my friend, is very, very overpowered. If you do the math, to get to Bal Top, just to beat the, you know, 8th place person, which I believe is at 1.2 million right now, at a rate of $40,000 a day, assuming you played every single day, it would only take you about one month to catch up from zero to 1.2 million dollars. Yes, you heard me correctly, you can get on Bal Top in one month. 1.2 million dollars. If you did enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I have and will continue to make tutorial videos. I've got commentary and montage videos on Invaded Lands. I've also got Ranked Sky Wars, HCF, Kit Map, uh, UHC is planned. We've got some Minecraft Pocket Edition factions, practice PvP, pretty much anything that suits your interest. And I'm always open to new ideas. So if you have something you'd like to see me play, let me know in the comments below. But that is going to be it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'm going to see you all in my next episode of Invaded Lands Kid PvP. Peace.